Welcome back to some new petty revenge stories, where people have small victories over those that wronged them. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Only Full Day Events. In my last place of work, when I was looking to hire someone for my department, I would offer cold drinks and coffee at the interview in order to make them feel welcome. We could take the cold drinks out of the storage, but we had to order coffee from the kitchen and someone from the kitchen team would bring it out. One day they called me back and said they couldn't bring me coffee since the CEO had decided coffee would only be provided for whole day events. That cheapskate. Since then I provided my own coffee for interviewees because to me the welcoming impression was more important than the like 30 cents a cup of coffee costs. But I plotted my little revenge, since I had been asked to do a workshop for the other department heads and the CEO also wanted to participate. He, for some reason, loved workshops. So the day of the workshop came. I prepped the room. The participants figured in and got settled, including the CEO. I greeted the group and laid out the plan for the next few hours and asked if there were any questions. The CEO asked, can we maybe call the kitchen and ask where the coffee is? They seem to be running late. I made a point of taking a sip from my travel mug, then I answered that there would be no coffee. This was a half day workshop and our new rule said that coffee would only be provided for whole day events. I still cherished the surly look he gave me in response. He did not say anything and instead opened a bottle of water. The next story is called Shouldn't Charge Back. A woman bought a designer handbag from me online. Then, about a week later, sends an extremely rude message, claiming it had damages and smelled funny. She wanted her money back immediately and demanded I send it to her on Venmo, which is against policy and a massive red flag for fraud. Or else she would file a chargeback. Threatening sellers with chargebacks is also against policy. Being as it was the weekend and her language was really bad, I decided not to interrupt my weekend and waited till Monday morning to respond, which is within the terms of service. She was really aggressive and sent me more rude messages, demanding I relent and pay her offside. Or else. I checked her feedback and at least one other seller reported that she also tried to coerce them into an offside refund with a chargeback. Buyers have enormous latitude in online sales and to be honest, I just didn't want to deal with her anymore. So on Monday I responded, offering her a full refund in exchange for a free return. Though I did not believe she was being honest, I gave her the benefit of the doubt and said maybe it was damaged in transit. I fully expected her to return the wrong item, but after I gave her a free return slash refund option, she filed a chargeback anyways, claiming the item is not as described. Then left very negative feedback. Both the feedback and the existence of a chargeback claim harm my presence on the site. It hits me with fees and an automatic refund for her taking money out of my account automatically and messing with my budget. There's a reason why most sellers will do almost anything to avoid chargebacks. It really is inconvenient and damaging for us. Now, as this used to be my profession, I know that it's considered fraudulent to file a chargeback when the retailer has offered a full refund. So naturally, I appealed the case and it was decided in my favor and her refund was reversed. I blocked her and moved along. Fast forward about two weeks and the original item shows up on my doorstep, returned and without any of the damages that she had complained about. I realized in this situation I have no legal obligation to refund her at all. But better still, when I went to the seller dashboard to try, I don't even have the option to refund her because the case she opened was closed and decided in my favor. I still felt a little funny about relisting, so I emailed the site for more direction. Apparently, when you file a chargeback, you are forfeiting your right to seek a refund directly from the retailer in favor of seeking a refund from your financial institution. She had apparently messaged the site and modified my feedback to demand a refund after the chargeback failed. She sent them the tracking number of the item she ultimately returned, saying that since she had a tracking number, they had to refund her. But a failed chargeback is final in this case. And because her behavior was deemed fraudulent, the website itself is not able or willing to refund her anymore either. The third story is called Drink Insurance. I used to run a restaurant where we would have weekly salsa nights and turn the place into a club. Some of the guests attracted were not ideal and one day we had one such guest. 
This woman gave a hard time to one of the bartenders, cutting in front of other guests and then, after being served, claiming the drink was too weak. She got into an argument with another guest, saying that the guest took her seat, even though she didn't leave anything on the bar top or seat where she was array at the dance floor. Fast forward one hour and I'm called over by a bartender, because this woman is now demanding her drink be remade due to her dropping it while dancing. Yes, she was dancing with it in her hand. She looks like she doesn't even need another drink and should likely be cut off. The second I come over though to talk to her, she asks me if I'm the manager. When I say yes, she says I have to make her another drink because she dropped hers. She's very rude, but luckily we have her card behind the bar, so she can't refuse to pay. I tell her we were not going to remake anything unless she purchased drink insurance. She looks shocked. I repeat, did you purchase drink insurance? If not, oh well. She was closed out and left, all while saying how she's never going to come back. Never saw her again, but somehow the place remained in business despite this. The next story is called Won't Turn It Off. I work as an electrician in a major metropolitan area. Many years ago, I was part of a big crew working on a years long project for a multinational pet food brand, factory, research, offices, etc. One building was for research and development, because this was essentially a lab it had tons of dedicated circuits, which are where one outlet is fed by one breaker in the panel. Because of this we were pulling tons of wire through conduits. Full days were spent pulling bundles from point A to point B. Of course, all the other trades were working on their own things as well, and we all got along fine. Except for the floor guys. They would plug a radio in and crank it up while they worked. Most days nobody minded. But when we are doing wire pulls, you need to be able to hear the guy at the other end of the pipe. Basically, they have to pull when you feed and you need to be able to shout stop or ok etc. So we asked nicely if the floor guys could turn the music off or at least down while we were doing this. They refused. I remember one guy saying, we gotta have our jams man, we can't work without them. An old timer I worked with, I'll call Olli, was cool but wouldn't accept that. He hatched a plan. The floor guys plugged their radio into the same plug every day. Oli had me find which circuit controlled that plug and told me to get there a little early the next morning. So I did. The next morning Oli had the panels opened up that fed the plug the floor guys used. We jumped a wire from the 277 volt panel to the plug they used for their radio. Basically feeding more than twice as much electricity to that outlet. My job was to watch them and let Oli know when they had tried to turn their radio on and to make sure no one else tried to use that plug. A few minutes go by and the floor guys show up, plug their radio in and turn it on. No sound comes on, but some smoke sure does. I hightail it back to the electrical room and Oli and I quickly put everything back to normal. A couple of minutes later, one of the floor guys finds us and tells us that plug isn't working. Oli grabs a corded drill and heads over to it, plugs it and fires up the drill and says, seems like it's working fine. Maybe your radio is busted? And as he heads back, I hear him say, let's see if you can't work without your jams. We finished our wire pulls in blessed silence and that radio never worked again. The last story is called The Red Binder. When I was a uni student, I picked up a second job at a fish and ship franchise run by a wealthy middle-aged woman. It was owned by her and her radio personality husband and was definitely operating at a loss. This didn't seem to bother her as it was clearly a hobby for her. Quickly it became obvious that they had a seriously fast staff turnover issue. They had one manager who had been there about a year and no other service staff that had been there more than a few weeks. I already had years of hospitality experience at this point and was quite comfortable with the processes and cash machine system, which I brought up multiple times. But I was stuck running food the whole time, as the manager had become used to doing everything himself and untrusting after seeing so many staff come and go and clearly just found it easier. I worked there one day a week, only working 4 hour shifts as the opening hours were just a small window in the evening. This job was a complete waste of my time and I was being treated like a child. I worked here for about 2 months and in this time she had never bothered to pay me and always had an excuse. I had become fed up and sent her my letter of resignation and told her that I was coming before university to pick up the money she owed me, to which she said, fine. 
I also added that I would be on my way to class and didn't have long. The restaurant was next to the train station that I took to uni. So to please have my money ready in cash. I arrive and she's talking to her friend. I decided that she knew I didn't have long and would surely wrap it up to pay me and send me on my way. But she proceeded to small talk with this woman for 10 minutes while I politely raved and made eye contact gesturing at my wristwatch implying I had to go. But she only held up a finger to me multiple times implying just a moment. This went on for an unreasonable amount of time and she was clearly power tripping and being rude. So after missing my train I said in my outdoor voice pay me the money you owe me or I'm calling the police. She scoffed and took me behind the counter and asked the manager to provide her with the red binder. To which he replied, what red binder? You know the one with everyone's shifts and payroll stuff. I've never heard or seen of such a binder, said her manager. They argue back and forth for a minute or so. I don't believe that this binder even exists at this point. She turns to me and says, what do I owe you? How many hours did you work? I say, I worked 51 hours. I had probably worked around 9 to 15 hours. To my surprise, she then proceeds to unlock her cash box in her office and hands me $1,100 and threw it into an envelope for me. I thanked her and power rock out of there before the manager who had walked away at this point caught wind of my lie. I couldn't believe it. This lady had just paid me 4 times what I was owed. I was probably only owed around $250, which if she had any organizational skills would have paid me already. She would have known the amount if she made any effort to keep track of her employees rosters. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.